Here's a problem that, at first glance, might seem straightforward, but there's something beautiful lurking beneath the surface. We want to find all values of x, where 6 to the power of x minus 5 to the power of x equals 11. Now, you might be tempted to guess and check, and, honestly, that's not a bad place to start. But what I love about this problem is that once we find a solution, proving it's the only solution requires some genuinely elegant reasoning. When facing exponential equations like this, there's a time-honored tradition of testing small integer values. It's not always guaranteed to work, but when it does, it gives us invaluable insight into the problem's structure. Let's try x equals 1. 6 to the first power minus 5 to the first power gives us 6 minus 5, which equals 1. That's quite a bit smaller than 11, so this isn't our solution. What about x equals 2? Well, 6 squared is 36, and 5 squared is 25, so we're looking at 36 minus 25. And that gives us 11. Perfect. So x equals 2 is indeed a solution to our equation. Great. We found ourselves a solution. But here's where things get interesting. Just because we found one solution doesn't mean we're done. What if there are other solutions hiding out there? Maybe some negative value of x or some weird irrational number. The only way to be completely sure is to prove that x equals 2 is the one and only solution. To tackle this systematically, let's think of the left side of our equation as a function. We'll call it f of x, where f of x equals 6 to the x minus 5 to the x. Now, to understand this function completely, we need to examine how it behaves in different regions. We'll split our investigation into three cases based on the value of x. Let's start with the case where x is positive. The key insight is to figure out whether this function is increasing or decreasing when x is positive. And the most reliable way to determine this is by looking at the derivative. Using the standard rule for differentiating exponential functions, we get f prime of x equals 6 to the x times the natural logarithm of 6 minus 5 to the x times the natural logarithm of 5. Now, to figure out whether this derivative is positive or negative, let's factor out 5 to the power of x. This factorization reveals the structure we need to analyze the sign. Now, the first thing to notice is that 5 to the x is always positive no matter what real value x takes. Now, inside the brackets, we have 6 fifths raised to the power x. Since we're considering positive values of x, and 6 fifths is greater than 1, this term will always be greater than 1. Here's the key insight. The natural logarithm of 6 is already bigger than the natural logarithm of 5. And when we multiply the natural log of 6 by something greater than 1, that first term becomes even larger relative to the second term. So the entire bracketed expression is positive. And since we're multiplying a positive number by another positive number, the whole derivative is positive. This tells us that f prime of x is always positive when x is positive. And what does that mean? Well, it means our function is strictly increasing for positive x. And here's a fundamental property of increasing functions. They can only hit any particular y value once. So if the function equals 11 at some positive x, that's the only positive x where it can equal 11. Since we already found that f of 2 equals 11, we've located the unique positive solution. There can't be any other positive values of x that work. But we're not done yet. To be completely rigorous, we need to check what happens when x equals 0 and when x is negative. When x equals 0, anything to the power of 0 is 1. 
so we get 1 minus 1, which is 0. That's definitely not 11, so x equals 0 is not a solution. Now, what about negative values of x? Well, when we have a negative exponent, that's equivalent to taking the reciprocal with a positive exponent. So our function becomes 1 over 6 to the absolute value of x minus 1 over 5 to the absolute value of x. Now, since the absolute value of x is positive and 6 is bigger than 5, we know that 6 to this power is larger than 5 to this power. But here's the thing about reciprocals. When you flip a bigger number and a smaller number, the inequality flips too. So 1 over the bigger number is actually smaller than 1 over the smaller number. This means we're subtracting a larger value from a smaller one. And that means our function is always negative when x is negative. Since 11 is positive, there's no way a negative function value could ever equal 11. So there we have it. We've systematically checked every possible case for x, and we can now say with complete confidence what the answer is. The equation 6 to the x minus 5 to the x equals 11 has exactly one solution, x equals 2. And you know what? This whole analysis becomes beautifully clear when we visualize it. Here's our function in blue. y equals 6 to the x minus 5 to the x. And in yellow, we have the horizontal line y equals 11. The solutions to our equation are exactly where these two curves intersect. And just as our analysis predicted, there's exactly one intersection point. If we zoom in, we can see that this intersection happens exactly at x equals 2, y equals 11. What I love about this problem is how the visual confirms our analytical work. We used calculus and careful case analysis to prove uniqueness. And the graph shows us exactly what we predicted. One clean, elegant solution. Thanks for working through this problem with me. If you enjoyed seeing how we can prove uniqueness in exponential equations, consider giving this video a like and subscribing for more mathematical explorations. Until next time, keep questioning and keep discovering.